Once an optimum system has been identified, operation and maintenance strategies must be developed in order to keep the network to its design standards. The network availability study identifies short-term and long-term operational issues and develops corrective as well as preventive maintenance plans. It comprises three subtasks. The availability analysis, which allows the system designer to compute the equipment and propagation availability requirements and to project end-to-end -end circuit availability numbers, taking into account the hardware and propagation availability numbers. The operation and maintenance subtask characterizes the O&M strategies, the redundancy, and spare part requirements best suited for the network. Possible philosophies include centralized strategies, regional maintenance centers, on-call maintenance with local technicians, or some hybrid combination of these strategies. Finally, the network management, monitoring, and control subtask shall clearly identify the remote diagnostic requirements, as well as the corrective and preventive maintenance actions. System specifications is an important task in the design process. It summarizes all the pertinent functions, parameters, features, and characteristics of the proposed network. This task describes and specifies the various system components, protocols, and interfaces that are required to implement the optimum system defined in previous tasks. These components include baseband, IF, and RF electronics. Hardware parameters include power levels, bandwidth requirements, and operating frequencies. The general system specifications define the purpose, scope, and overall requirements of the network and the hardware specifications. Here, the remote terminals, central site, and satellite hardware must be specified in terms of their functional capabilities, communications parameters, electrical, mechanical, and environmental characteristics, protocols, and interface features, so as to meet or exceed the overall network requirements. The system specifications task is typically followed by the procurement process. In compliance with the Federal Communications Commission rules, a general system description and technical analysis must be submitted. All legal and regulatory issues are addressed in order to assure a smooth implementation of the program. Concurrently, requests for proposal documents, RFPs, are generated and submitted to candidate hardware and software vendors. The RFPs contain all the system specifications information. Upon receipt of RFP responses, the proposals are objectively evaluated using technical, regulatory, legal, and financial criteria. Appropriate vendors are selected at this point, and procurement negotiations are initiated. The actual procurement process involves the purchasing and acquisition of the specified hardware and software. These purchased items are then shipped to the customer's location where pre-installation tests are performed. After the acquisition of the required hardware, the system can be hooked up and tested for the delivery of the required services. Proper tests are also conducted in order to ensure that the constructed system has met the prescribed performance standards. This task comprises four sets of activities. Pre-installation activities include the collection of site-specific data in terms of its geographical, electrical, mechanical, and environmental characteristics. During this effort, the required zoning and permits are obtained. Contacts with local contractors must also be established. Next, the site survey identifies the requirements and potential problems for hardware installation, and it also analyzes limitations and recommends corrective actions and solutions. The third set of actions, site preparation, implements solutions recommended by the site survey effort. Here, all prerequisite activities for hardware installation are performed. These may include antenna foundation, clearance for line of sight, trenches and conduits, 
installation of poles and hardware support structures, pulling of appropriate cables, and power provisions for equipment activation and operation. The actual installation subtask involves the physical installation of all procured communications hardware and software, the antenna alignment, acquisition of the desired satellite, and the establishment of communication circuits as specified by the network design task. Once the system is operating according to its design objectives, it is handed over to the user. Traffic is moved from the current to the proposed system according to a carefully designed migration plan. Such a plan allows a smooth transition and continuity of service. Once installed, the overall system is tested to ensure that the implemented network is performing according to the prescribed requirements. Tests may include hardware, software, performance, connectivity, and reliability standards. Documentation and training are very important components of the system commissioning. This task generates the necessary documentation and operations manuals required for the smooth operation and rapid maintenance of the system. All vendor documentation and drawings must be provided to the customer or system user. The final task consists of setting up a suitable operation and maintenance structure. An optimum O&M support system enables the operators and maintenance technicians to keep the system at high operational standards in terms of availability, performance, flexibility, and cost efficiency. Throughout the design process, tangibles must be delivered to the customer. Typical deliverables consist of periodic reports, which may be weekly or monthly. Deliverables also include procured hardware, software, and all contracted services. Throughout the program, the project manager must maintain accounting records and status reports, procure system hardware and software, and control the overall direction of the program. Let's conclude with some recommendations on system design. There are essentially two opposite philosophies for the design of telecommunications systems a technology-driven approach and an applications-driven methodology. In a technology-driven approach, the hardware is the centerpiece of the design process. The system characteristics are dictated by available technologies and equipment. This approach offers one attractive advantage, short implementation schedules. However, hardware-driven solutions do not always comply with the fundamental user's requirements. An alternative approach to system engineering is to let the user's applications and requirements drive the design process. Once the user's needs are well understood, technical and economic trade-offs through a cost-benefit analysis typically yield optimum network parameters. These trade-offs, coupled with an appreciation of state-of-the-art technologies, provide despite Murphy's Law, the necessary conditions for the integration of a fully compliant solution, that is, one that meets the goals and objectives of the network user. This concludes our presentation on the design and implementation of satellite communication systems. Other tapes are available at Space 2000 or the George Washington University on satellite systems planning, design, integration, technology trends, and economics. Thank you for your attention.